This lead code question is called count and say. It says the count and say sequence is the sequence of integers with the first five terms as following. The first row is one, the second row is one, one, the third row is two, one, the fourth row is one, two, one, one, and the fifth row is one, 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 two, two, one. You can basically get to the next row by saying the characters and their counts of the row above it. So this row has one, one, that gives you the next row. This row has two ones, and that gives you this, two, one. This row has one, two, and one, one, that gives you one, two, one, one, and so on. It says, given an integer n where n is between one and 30, generate the nth term of the count and say sequence. Note, each term of the sequence of integers will be represented as a string. So example one, the input is one and the output is one because that's the first row. And example two, the input is four and the output is one, two, one, one, because that's the fourth row of the sequence. All right, so let's say we have the number three, three, eight. This is not part of the count and say sequence, but if it were, it would come out to be two, three, one. 8. And that's because we have two threes and one eight. We can get to that by using two pointers. Let's call the first pointer the character pointer and the second pointer the counter pointer. And I'll show you why. What we're going to do with the second pointer is we're just going to move it until it's no longer on the same character as the first pointer. So right now, we've moved it until it got to the character eight. How many times did we have to move it to do that? We started off here, so one, two. So the first number would be two. What character is the first pointer on? It's on the character three. So right now we have two, three. Now what we'll do is we'll reset the character pointer to wherever the counter pointer is and we'll do the same thing again. We'll move the counter pointer until it's no longer on the same character as the character pointer, which is this. How many moves was that? It was one. So we have one and what character is the character pointer on? Eight. So it's two, three, one, eight. All right, so let's do that again, but using the count and say sequence. The first thing we have to do is we have to manually add the number one. So we have the first row already. What would the next one be? So as I said before, we need two different pointers, one to keep track of the character and one to keep track of the count of that character. We move the character pointer until it no longer equals the same thing that the character pointer is on, which is this. How many times did we have to move it? We only had to move it one time. And what character is the character pointer on? It's on one. So our answer is one, one. Let's do it again. Start out with the number one, one. We'll have a character pointer and we'll have a counter pointer. So we'll move the counter pointer until it's no longer on the same character as the character pointer. We'll move it one, two times. So that'll be two. And what character is the character pointer on? It's on the character one. So that'll give us two, one. Let's just do it one more time. Just very quickly, we have a character pointer, counter pointer. We move the counter pointer until it's no longer on the same character as the character pointer, which is there. How many times did we have to move it? We just had to move it once. What character is the character pointer on? The number two. So we'll reset the character pointer to where the counter pointer is. Do the same steps again. We'll move the counter pointer until it's different than the character pointer. How many moves did that take? 
it only took one. And what character is the character pointer on? It's on the number one. All right, let's get to the code. What lead code has given us is a function called count and say, which accepts a parameter n. n is just the row of the count and say sequence that we want to get. For this example, we'll pretend n is four, and the fourth row, if you look to the left, of the count and say sequence is one, two, one, one. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna manually add the first row and we'll call it final string. This is eventually gonna hold the entire count and say sequence that we're gonna build. All right, so since we've already manually added the first row, we'll say if n is one. So if we're asking just about the first row, we'll just return final string. All right, remember we also need two pointers. We'll call them character pointer. So let character pointer equal zero. And the other one will be count pointer. We'll also start that at zero. And we'll call whichever row we're building at that time, string in progress. So let string in progress equal an empty string. Okay, so right now, we just have the number one in our sequence. Okay, so now we need a while loop that runs n minus one times. So if we say we want the sequence when n is two, this while loop will just run once because we've already built the first row. Now we need another while loop to ensure that we iterate over every character in a row. So we'll say while count pointer is less than final string dot length. I'll go over all of these in more detail as we build the sequence. In the meantime, let's just add our two pointers. This will be the character pointer. And this will be the count pointer. Notice they're both starting on the zeroth index of the string because that's how we instantiated them in lines 12 and 13. Now we need another while loop. This will keep moving the count pointer until it's on a different character than the character pointer. Remember, this is how we determine the count of the string we're on. All right, so we'll say while final string dot character at character pointer equals final string dot character at count pointer we just need to keep incrementing the count pointer I know that the code here is a little bunched together and hard to read so just remember that I always have a final version of the code linked in the description below. All right, let's just take a pause to see where we are so far. This inner loop is going to increment the second pointer until it's no longer on the same character as the first pointer. This is how we count the number of same characters we have in a row. Notice we only move the second pointer once, which means we only have one of that character. All right. Now we're gonna build the string in progress. Remember the string in progress is just the string that we're building for the row we're on. So we'll say string in progress plus equals count pointer, which is currently at index one, minus character pointer, which is currently at index zero, and then we'll just convert that to a string. So all this line is doing is it's counting the number of those characters we have in a row. It's taking the difference between the index of this and the index of this. There's a difference of one. Then it's saying, okay, that's what 
our string is so far for that row. I'll just put that down here. So this is just the count again. So we have one. And in the next line, what we're going to do is we're going to say what we have one of. That'll look like this. String in progress plus equals final string dot character at character pointer. What that's saying is to look at the actual character we're on. That's the character one and add that to our string in progress. So we'll add that here, which would give us one one. Remember what that's saying is that we have in the row above one of the number one. Then we'll just reset this pointer to where the count pointer is. This is in case we have more characters in this row. In this case we don't, so it looks pointless, but you'll see how it works in the next loop. On the right in code that looks like this, character pointer equals count pointer. So now that we're done building our string in progress, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace our final string with that. So now our final string looks like this. Notice that that is this row. In the code that looks like this, final string is now replaced with the string we just built, the string in progress. And now that we're gonna repeat that entire sequence again to get our next row, we'll just reset everything. We'll say string in progress equals empty string, our character pointer is zero, our count pointer is also zero, and finally we decrease n. So right now, it's gonna look something like this. Our character pointer is reset. And so is our count pointer. All right, so let's do a couple more rows. We'll go back up to line 16. It says while n is greater than one, our n is four. And right now we're on n being three. So we can still continue. Then it says while well, count pointer is less than the length of the final string. Our final string so far is one one, that has a length of two. Our count pointer is zero, so that means we can also enter that while loop. Then the next line is saying to move up the count pointer until it's on a different character than the character pointer. So we'll move it up one. Is this on a different character? No, it's not, so we'll move it up two. So now it's on the index two. So the next line is saying, all right, now that we know how many of those characters we have in a row, we need to add that to our string in progress string. We just moved it two, so we have two, and now we move to line 23. What do we have two of? Line 23 is saying, give me the string that the character pointer is on. What is it on? It's on the number one. So that'll give us two, one. We go back up to line 17. It says while count pointer is less than final string dot length, count pointer is at index two and the length of the final string is two. So we break out of that loop. So now all there's left to do for this row is we skip down to line 27. We replace the current final string with the string in progress we just built. Notice that that matches the next row. And now we reset all of our variables so we can do it again and get to the next row. So line 28 resets our string in progress and lines 29 and 30 say put our pointers back at the first index. So we'll put this here and we'll put this here. 
Then we decrease n, so n is now 2, which means we're going to be on the final loop. So line 17, while count pointer, which is 0, is less than the final string dot length, which at this point is 2, we're going to enter that loop. Okay, line 18 says to move our count pointer until it's no longer at the same character as our character pointer. So we did that, and notice we only moved it once. So that means we go down to line 22. So our string in progress for this row is the number 1, because we only moved that once. Now it's saying, what character is it on? It's on character 2. So one more time, what that's saying is that we have 1 of the number 2. All right, so then it goes to line 24. Make sure these are the same. Goes up to line 17, the while loop. It says while well, count pointer, which is currently on the number one, is less than the length of the final string, which is two. Then we go into that loop, which we do. Line 18 says move the count pointer as many times as it takes to not be on the same character. So that only moved it once. Line 22 says, then we add that to the string in progress. And line 23 says, give me the character that the character pointer is on. That is on the character one. Okay, line 24, move this one forward one also. Line 17 says, only go until the count pointer is less than the length of the final string. The count pointer is at 2, the final string's length is 2, so that's going to break out of that loop. Then we get to line 27, and it says replace our current final string with our string in progress. This is the final string. This is the string in progress. That's now going to be the final string. Notice that that matches the fourth row. All the variables are going to be reset, so string in progress is now empty. The count pointer will be here. The character pointer will be here. Okay. We decrease n, so that breaks us out of our outer while loop. And guess what? We have our answer. So the only thing left to do is to return that answer. Remember what we have now is our final string. So at the very end, we'll just return our final string. All right, let's run the code. Looks good, let's submit. All right, so our solution was faster than about 52% of other JavaScript submissions. Remember the code and written explanation are linked down below. If you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. See you next time.